Why do so many people buy lottery tickets these days? Simple, right? It's cheap, low risk, possible huge payout. Well, fantasy football is the exact same way. And I got a few names that could turn out to be some late round lottery tickets, potential league winners that you don't want to miss. What's going on, Headliner Nation, Jake, Fantasy Headliners? Hopefully you guys are all doing well out there. Welcome back to the Draft.com studios, where today we're talking about lottery tickets, late round lottery tickets that could be potential league winners for you here in 2019 fantasy football. I got a few guys from each position that I really think have that late round value that you can target late, almost at the ends of your fantasy football drafts, and they could not only just turn out to be weekly starters for your team, but they may be potential league winners. That's where you're trying to find the value. That's what we're going to be talking about today. You do not want to miss the names that are on this list. Real quick, before we get into the names, make sure you head over to our website, thefantasyheadliners.com. Lots of other great information over there. And you can purchase our draft guide for $19.99, jam-packed with almost 500 pages of straight fantasy football fire. If you're looking for a sneak peek, here you go. It's definitely something you do not want to miss out on. We're getting all kinds of reviews back from people who have purchased this draft guide saying, hey, this is everything I need to absolutely kill it in 2019. So make sure you go out there, get your copy now. Don't miss out on it. It's only $19.99. It'll be that way for the rest of the offseason. Now, you can see a couple jerseys hanging behind me. Those are in the middle of being given away right now. I got two thumbnails I'm going to flash up here on the screen. These are the two videos you need to go check out on our channel. It gives you all the details of how you can enter to win a free autographed Keenan Allen jersey. And I have an autographed Alvin Kamara jersey. We're giving them away right now. Head over to those videos, find out the details, follow the simple steps, and you could be uh, you know, shipped an autographed authenticated jersey just for watching a show. Absolutely a great deal. Go check it out. But now let's talk about a few late round lottery tickets potential league winners for 2019 fantasy football. All right, let's kick it off with the quarterback position. First one up, Jimmy G. Jimmy Garoppolo of the San Francisco 49ers, who has an 8-2 and two career record as a starter. And he missed the majority of 2018 with a torn ACL, but looks to be healthy starting 2019. And what does he get here to start 2019? An absolute buttload of young weapons to throw the ball to. We already know about the speedster Marquise Goodwin. Looks like he's healthy to start the season. They drafted Debo Samuel, Dante Pettis, who really had a strong end to 2018. They drafted Jalen Hurd, who's kind of like a hybrid everything. He can play all over the field. We already know about George Kittle. And all of the pass-catching running backs in the backfield, you got Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon, Matt Breed is still there. He has weapons all over the field. And Kyle Shanahan has really struggled having a solidified quarterback here in San Francisco so far. It's kind of been like a rotating door the past couple years. But don't forget that prior to his days in San Francisco, Shanahan had a top 10 offense in total yards six out of the nine years that he was an offensive coordinator. In 2018, the Shanahan offense threw for 4,247 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 20 interceptions. But that's with 13 games of C.J. Beathard and Nick Mullins. If you take the total combined QB stats from last season in 2018, combine them into one quarterback, they would have finished as quarterback 10 in 2018. Now, I think we would all agree, for the most part, that Jimmy G is pretty much on a different level than C.J. Beathard and Nick Mullins. But he's also starting the season with a lot more weapons this year than he started with in 2018. We already talked about that. We always talk about the late round quarterback, the value late in drafts. It's possible with this huge upside of Jimmy G and an ADP of 136, he's definitely a name you can target late in drafts that could turn into a quarterback one and you didn't have to spend a high pick on him. Next quarterback on the list is going to be Derek Carr, quarterback of the Oakland Raiders. A lot of people hate Derek Carr. I really don't understand why. I mean, we talked about him on this show just a few weeks, maybe about a month or so ago, and really... A lot of people just don't seem to care about Derek Carr. I mean, heck, his ADP just keeps falling. But despite the touchdowns really being down in 2018, he set career highs, a lot of them, in completion percentage with 68.9%, in yards thrown with 4,049, 
I mean, he finished as the quarterback 17 in fantasy football, and that was with limited weapons last year. I mean, Jared Cook was by far his number one weapon majority of the season in 2018. Well, they gave him plenty of pass-catching threats this season, right? They brought in Antonio Brown. They brought in Tyrell Williams. They drafted Hunter Renfro. And they also drafted Josh Jacobs to really try to establish a run game there behind him to take some pressure off. One area where he really excelled in 2018, he was the fourth-ranked quarterback on deep throw percentage with 44% completion percentage on deep throws. Now, what do Antonio Brown and Tyrell Williams really live off in the NFL? Go ahead, think about it for a second. Yep, it's the deep ball. This could be a match made in heaven for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, I mean, they're bound to throw the ball more here in 2019 with all the weapons that they have. Their defense, below average. We may see a lot of garbage points this year. A lot of late game, fourth quarter, you know, big throws where they're trying to, to you know, take away a deficit, trying to get back in the game. Those are the type of matchups that really win fantasy football weeks. Don't discount Derek Carr right now. His ADP is 163, basically one of the last picks in your fantasy football draft, and he has top 10 upside. I know it's Derek Carr. I know a lot of people hate him, but he's in a good position to really succeed here in 2019. All right, let's move on to the running back position. I'm going to bend the rules just a little bit on this one. This guy's ADP is a little bit earlier than everybody else's on this list, but the value is so great, I can't do a show like this and not talk about it. Plus... It's my show. I can bend the rules whenever I really want to. So who am I talking about? It's Latavius Murray of now the New Orleans Saints. Don't forget, people, he's not in Minnesota anymore. The very productive ground game of New Orleans now has Latavius Murray, and all signs are pointing to him really taking over that Mark Ingram role in that offense. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Mark Ingram. He had some great seasons in New Orleans. But Murray is actually a better athlete overall than Ingram. I mean, almost every single athletic test, Murray grades higher in. So it's not like this is really a downgrade for New Orleans. I mean, heck, last year in Minnesota, Latavius Murray saw stacked boxes on more than a quarter of his carries for the year. And he still finished 14th in the NFL among running backs with three and a half yards per carry against stacked boxes. That's something he won't have to worry about as much in New Orleans, though. We know Drew Brees is going to pull the defenders outside of the box. I mean, Ingram only saw stacked boxes on 16% of his carries, and every little bit helps in this New Orleans offense. He could really rack up fantasy points late in games as they're running the ball to run the clock out, and they don't want to risk the injuries to like an Alvin Kamara. We could see a lot of Latavius Murray late in second halves this year. Once again, garbage points win fantasy championships. I don't care what anybody else says. Now, with an ADP of 73, he could easily be your weekly flex play with RB2 upside. And you're getting him in the 6th, 7th, 8th round, really depending on your league size. Just don't forget about Latavius Murray on draft day. What did Mark Ingram do in this offense? The last two seasons, which he played full, he finished inside the top 10 in 2016 and 2017. Now, do I say that Latavius Murray is going to automatically hop into the top 10 in this offense? No, I'm not. But with the pick right there in the 6th, 7th, 8th round to get a weekly starter that's going to touch the ball in one of the best offenses in the NFL, sign me up for that lottery ticket all day long. All right, for the next running back, we're going to venture back down into the triple digits of ADP to really stay on the theme of this show. And this guy just won't seem to go away. He may play forever. Who is it? It's Adrian Peterson, running back of the Washington Redskins. And we already know that Darius Geis is struggling with hamstring injuries this year. And we've talked about it on this show before over the past few weeks. So if you haven't heard it yet, make sure you go check out. I kind of went into more detail when I was talking about Dalvin Cook as a possible must-own this year. But players coming off of ACL tears have a higher likelihood of having weakened hamstrings, at least for 12 to 18 months. Kind of similar to what we saw with Dalvin Cook last year. Remember, he started off the season slow, battled hamstring injuries you know, to start the year. Is that what we can expect for Darius Geis this year? If that's the case, Adrian Peterson becomes the main beneficiary of this. Now, Chris Thompson seems to be healthy. He'll be involved in the passing game. But for a possible rookie starting quarterback with Dwayne Haskins, Adrian Peterson could be a welcoming sight to really take off some of that pressure. Their offensive line is improved, which should also help. And I know Peterson is nowhere near what he used to be. But he could be a great late-round pick 
and a solid option with an ADP right now of 118. You could literally, at the 118th pick, draft a running back who is going to be a week one starter in the NFL. There's not too many of those out there. That's a great value. Is he going to be the stable of your team? Is he going to be the, the cornerstone of your running back core? No, he better not be at that point. He may be your running back four or five by that point. And for that kind of value, I'm not passing it up. Even if it doesn't last all year, at least I have another solid option on my bench to start the season. I'm all about it. All right, let's talk about a rookie running back as a potential late-round lottery ticket. It's Damian Harris, running back of the New England Patriots in, in one of the most confusing backfields in all of fantasy football. Could Damian Harris really have some value? I mean, it just came out a few days ago that Sony Michelle has been placed on the PUP list to start camp. If you don't know what PUP stands for, it's the physically unable to perform list. I think I could probably make that list a time or two. And I'm sure he'll be active by the start of the season. But do these knee injuries that he's suffering from become nagging? Do they limit him from time to time? Does he miss games throughout the season? I mean, you have to think this is one of the reasons they drafted Harris to begin with. They're not sold on the fact that he's going to be good to go for 16 games. New England is another one of those offenses, though, that just make running backs successful. It doesn't really matter who you put back there. They're going to produce solid numbers. I mean, think about some of the old backs that produced there that went on to not really produce. I mean, most recently, what, LeGarrette Blunt, Deion Lewis, just to name a couple. I mean, if Harris gets a chance to run the ball in this backfield, I think he finds success. And if that's the case, do they continue to give him the ball? Now, right now, his ADP is 105, late enough to where he doesn't have a whole lot of risk on your roster. You could take him in the double-digit rounds, sit on him for a few weeks, and you never know. If Sony Michelle does not return to 100%, you could possibly have the number one running back of the New England Patriots in the double-digit rounds. It may not turn into anything. He may sit on your bench, get a few carries here and there, but you didn't you know, use a high draft pick, and there isn't a whole lot of risk. The potential upside outweighs the risk. Damian Harris could be a potential league winner here in 2019. All right, here we go. Moving on to pass catchers now. The first wide receiver we're going to be talking about, you may have heard of him, you may not have. Who is it? It's Traquan Smith, wide receiver of the New Orleans Saints. Now, could he possibly take over the number two wide receiver spot in New Orleans this year? It's entirely possible. He's definitely somebody we need to pay attention to here throughout the preseason. Now, we know that that doesn't mean he's going to get some huge target share because we know the bulk of the looks are going to go towards Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. And newly acquired Jared Cook is there to eat up some targets as well. But Traquan Smith showed flashes at times in 2018. And he has all the traits that is needed to be a big-time playmaker in a big-time offense. We always try to find those key pieces in high-powered offenses because of their potential offensive upside, right? We do it a lot with the wide receivers of Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady and a few of the others throughout the league that really have that high-powered offense. Smith could be just that if he could take over that wide receiver two role in New Orleans. And here's the best part of it. His ADP right now, it's 158. Take him in the late rounds. Stash him as your wide receiver four or wide receiver five. You never know. You could have yourself a solid flex play come middle of the season, and you got him towards the very end of your draft. The upside is there. The potential is there. Does he get the opportunity? That's the reason the ADP is so low. Take a chance. He could be a lottery ticket. Next wide receiver is going to be a rookie. It's going to be Andy Isabella, wide receiver of the Arizona Cardinals, and I can hear you out there. Yes, I hear you. I know rookie wide receivers have a hard time producing right away. This situation could be a little different, though, if you think about it. I mean, he was basically traded for Josh Rosen, right? He was drafted in the end of the second round with a pick that they got from the Miami Dolphins. And he fits the air raid style perfectly. He has a rookie quarterback coming fresh off of a Heisman season, a coach coming fresh out of college, and an offense that thrives off throwing the football. Now, Murray is not going to have a whole lot of time to just sit in the pocket and go through progressions. He's going to have to make things happen with his feet a lot. I can see that line breaking down, Murray escaping the pocket, and finding the speedster Isabella on the move where he can really make things happen. Don't forget Andy Isabella, one of the fastest wide receivers coming out of college this year, running a 4.340, and he constantly produced at the college level. He's basically free in almost every draft. His ADP, 162. That is very, very little risk for potentially huge, huge upside. Yes, the Cardinals may not go out there and win a bunch of ball games, 
but the offense is going to be a lot more exciting. They're going to get a lot of yards in this offense, and that's what we care about with fantasy football. Andy Isabella could be a total lottery ticket in 2019. All right, here we go, talking tight ends, the football kind. Let's talk about Dallas Goddard, tight end of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I really want to call him Godare. I mean, it sounds more sophisticated and awesome. I'll fight the urge, though, and just go with Goddard. But listen, I'm not a huge fan of drafting multiple tight ends during my fantasy football draft. I'm just not. But at a position that is so thin, spending an end-round pick on Dallas Goddard may not be a bad idea here in 2019. He is by far the best tight end handcuff, if that's what you want to call him, in the NFL. If anything happens to Zach Ertz, Goddard immediately becomes like a top five to seven tight end in fantasy football. He'll still be used at times throughout the season, but won't be consistent enough to be your weekly starter right off the bat. I mean, he averaged 10 yards of reception and one touchdown every 11 targets in 2018. The upside is there for sure, and he's going undrafted in a lot of leagues depending on your league size. If you do not get one of the top tight ends in fantasy football this year, maybe it's not a bad idea to go with a two tight end strategy. Take Goddard late. If Ertz goes down, all of a sudden, you're right there at the very top of the tight end food chain here in 2019. All right, last tight end up on the list. Last guy on the show. It's going to be my boy, Jack Motherfucking Doyle of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, is it possible that we're still overvaluing Eric Ebron just a little bit? and undervaluing Jack Doyle a little bit? I mean, in the games that they played together, Doyle outsnapped Ebron 331 to 164. He also out-targeted him 29 to 15. And it wasn't that he was just in there blocking all the time. Doyle ran 27 routes per game compared to 11 per game of Eric Ebron in the games they played together. Now, no, I'm not saying that Eric Ebron is going to suck in 2019. We all know the Colts have used two tight end sets a lot in the past, and they will again here in 2019. The TD upside may be there for Eric Ebron, but the consistency week in and week out, that may go to Jack Doyle. He's a sure-handed tight end who Andrew Luck trusts for sure. Zero drops last year on all catchable targets. With an ADP right now of 154, Jack Doyle could be a great PPR option out there if you waited late for tight end in your draft. The target should be there. He may not have a huge touchdown upside number, but it would not surprise me if he gets close to 75 receptions, 700 yards, and a handful of TDs here in 2019. That would make him a fringe tight end one that you got around the 13th round of your fantasy football draft. I don't know about you. That sounds like lottery ticket to me. All right, so there are a few late round lottery tickets. If I gave you any information you enjoyed or liked, make sure you hit that like button for me. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. But are there other names out there that you're thinking about? Some guys who you're targeting really late. Potential league winners late in drafts. I want to know what you guys are thinking. What are you looking for late in your drafts? Throw it down below in the comment section. I look forward to interacting with you back and forth. Make sure you go check out those videos from the beginning. You want to get entered in to win these autographed jerseys. We're going to be giving away here soon. You do not want to miss out on that opportunity. So go check those out. Go check out our draft guide there on our website, thefantasyheadliners.com. Really appreciate all the support there of Headliner Nation. Uh, If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you do, let me know down in the comment section that you're new. I would love to welcome you personally here to, to Headliner Nation. Hopefully you guys all have a great rest of your week. Talk to you later.